Alright, in the first half of the class, uh, we spend time to look at what is event marketing and also we look at uh, marketing segmentation, target marketing, as well as marketing mass, which are 4P, uh, product, price, promotion, and place. So in the second part of this video, so I'm going to spend a little bit more time to talking about different types of the promotional approach that we can use to promote our events. Also, we're going to look at what kind of media they can help us to reach out to the board audience to disseminate the information that we plant, right? So for the sports event promotion, um, so the first thing uh, for you need to think about is how you be able to collaborate with sponsors and media partners for promoting these events. A lot of those sponsors, since they spread invest the money to this event, so they also need to think about how they're able to activate their sponsorships. So they do have a budget to activate the sponsorships. They will like to create a lot of different activities associated with the sponsorship, try to let people to know that we are part of these events. So for you, you have to go and think about how you'll be able to collaborate with them, not just using your own resources, but also to take advantage of their resources to help you to develop more creative activity They can help you to target your audience. Right, so those are sponsors. Media partners so so, right? Media partners they really put money to you um to these events and would like to promote this event, help them to increase their viewerships. Right. So for you, you also need to think about what kind of support you can give them to create more creative contents than they can broadcast on their platforms, which could help you to disseminate this information to the board audiences to catch people's attentions. Uh, particularly uh, those media customers. So the strategy we normally would use for the event promotions we call SAT, uh, SAT. Right. So um, that focus on four, uh, three area. The first one is we try to set our target to increase sales. Right. Uh, why do those sponsors want to invest money to these events? Why do media broadcasters want to invest in these events? They are looking at sales number. And for you, very important thing for uh, being a marketer um, is how you be able to really increase the sales, right? So you can think about a lot of different way um, to really creative way. They can really help you to sell more products, sell more service, right? And the second thing you need to do is you need to build awareness not just increase the sales but also let people to know what you're doing right so that is very important it's called build awareness the third one is to try to encourage turn in um, not just let people to know what you're doing but also it's very important to let people to educate its customers and make sure they're able to show up and you know really attend these events right so um, we'll give you an example Kia um, has been spending um, a lot of money um, with the NBA. Um, Kia has been collaborating with the NBA for the NBA All-Star uh, for many years. So they spent like $14 million um, to be the NBA sponsors. So they, in order to make sure their sponsorships is worth it, so they do actually create a lot of these events to try to connect, associate with this um this event so one thing uh, from this picture you can see um they ask basketball player to down um in front of their car so obviously they can catch people's attention so right? letting people know that we are just introduced a new car and also um they very effectively connect the basketball and their own products together so for you if you work for the nba if you are the one who um, is responsible for promoting NBA All-Star Games, you will need to think about how you be able to uh, collaborate with Kia to increase the sales. So for instance, you might be able to say, oh, um, if you purchase um, NBA All-Star Games tickets, um, you'll be able to um, have 10% discount for buying a new uh, models of Kia's vehicles. Right, so that's that's kind of like good collaboration. They can help Kia sell more cars. At the same time, they can help you sell more tickets. So create these kind of packages, right? Um, in terms of sales promotion, 
there are many different ways that we are able to um, increase the sales. Very common one is we give the discount offer. Um, that is very, very common. Uh, for the discount offers, it's like, um, we be able to build this attendance um, for those less attended periods, particularly during the multiple days events. Uh, for instance, um, if we're hosting an event that would be lasting for about you know, seven days, uh, people are more likely to show up and the events during the weekends, but during the weekdays, the attendance could be low. So we could um, have some ticket discount offer and then try to encourage more people to show up and attend this event. Family package we talked about before. Um, so we would like to create a multiple different deals. Uh, we try to offer a very special numbers of admissions at the lower combined price. Um, the goal is also try to sell more products, increase sales, right? Premium giveaway. Um, um, premium giveaway is also um, very common in the sports events. Um, so they encourage you to buy this ticket earlier. So um, I think we all are pretty familiar with early bird price, right? So if you buy these uh, tickets before this day, you will get discount. But if you miss this deadline, you won't be able to enjoy this discount, right? The premium giveaway um, is also the same. The early arrivals normally will have some sort of benefit or gift, right? So this is also very common to help you to sell more things. And bounce by coupon, they offer a very special discount and premium items of the sponsors if they redeem uh, special locations. So for instance, um, you can ask people to come here to attend, participate this event. Um, you'll be able to give them a coupon and they'll be able to redeem these coupons at the sponsors. Um, so it's actually on one hand, they can help you in, uh, get more attendance and also help sponsors, um, you know, also attract more people to connect the event with the sponsors. It's actually a win-win for both you and sponsors. And also very common, we we'll always see is buy one, get one free, right? That is also very common. So using coupon, using vouchers, using discount codes um, are very common nowadays. They are effective. Uh, Right, so, uh, but also you have to make sure, uh, you have to consider whether you will cheaper um, the event's image. So when you try to provide this kind of promotion, you will have to be really careful about it. Okay, so those are sales promotions. Um, how are we able to build up the awareness? We talk about we have to increase the sales. We also have to build awareness. How we able to achieve this goal? So there are many different ways we are able to um, increase the awareness of these events. All right. To increase the awareness of these events, we can use advertising, which is very, very common. We have to spend some money to advertise our products, advertise our events, letting more people to know about when, where, and we're going to have these events and how they're able to buy the tickets, how they're able to attend these events. Right. So public cities is we organize some activities, allow people to know the, what we are doing. And we also have a direct sales. We have worth of mouth. People uh, all talk about it. And also, of course, nowadays we're living in 21st century digital media, social media play a very important role for you to sell things. Um, OK, let's look at the first thing is advertising. So what is uh, advertising? Uh, what is advertisement? Advertising is a pay, now no personal, clearly sponsored messages. So all the commercial we watch on TV, or advertising we see on newspaper, magazines. So you know those are have to pay, right? You have to pay medias, um, and then you will be able to have the spaces that you can disseminate the informations, right? And also all this information we disseminate, we not try to target. Each individual, when I say target, hey, Mr. Smith, um, please know that we're going to have this event. We're not going to um, address to a particular customers. We normally will have a non-personal messages that will be disseminated on that platforms. And also we have a clearly sponsored messenger letting people to know. Uh, for the advertising, very important thing is we need to go and select media, right? How are we going to select media that really 
um, related to the target market. So if you target a bigger market, obviously you have to collaborate with like national media, or even international media. Right? If you are just only going to target a very particular local market, of course you're gonna try to use localized um, media platforms. We have different types of media. Uh, we can classify them into three types. One is the print media, including newspaper, magazine, also trade publication. The second time is electronic media, including television, radios, including the websites and also mobile application. And also the outdoor media, also we sometimes we call them street media. Street media is including billboards, bus, uh, benches and posters. Right. So for instance, um, a very common is in the transportation, so we'll be able to see a lot of um, advertisements. Uh, like if you go to airport, you'll be able to see uh, the advertisement at the airports. Uh, we can always see in the subway station, we can also see the advertisements. And also this air hot balloon, we're using that um, to catch people's attention, which is also uh, outdoor media. Right. So those are the um, different types of platform. Chosen different media costs obviously vary. We'll give you some examples about um, the cost of these medias. So give examples. If you would like to have a 30 second commercial during the prime time TV, um, that you will have to spend at least um, uh, $112,000. Um, that is like for the local TV, right? So if um, you want to have the 30 second commercial Big Bang Theory, you know, it was, it was the past, then the, the Big Bang Theory uh, actually a lot of viewers. So you have to spend this amount of money. Um, if one full colors uh, on the front page of New York Times uh, is about $50,000, that sounds cheap, right? But um, they require you to have this advertise, uh, advertisement for at least three months. So um, it's still very expensive. So that's why a lot of people would like to use um, social media like Instagrams, like Snapchats, right? If you want to have a brand story, Snapchats cost kind of a lot of money too, $750,000. But if you just want to have a thousand impressions and Instagram only cost you $20, right? If you have to a thousand impressions on the sponsored video Instagram cost you $30. So, right, so it depends on your budgets. You would choose a very uh, different platforms to promote it yourselves. So from what we just discussed, and what factor normally will impact the advertising rates? So first of all, types of media, right? So if you would like to advertise your products or events on the national medias, um, obviously the cost is very high. And if you want to advertise uh, something on televisions compared to uh, newspapers, obviously the cost will also be high. And size of the media um, is also important. We talk about national media, charge a little bit more money um, than the local media, right? Frequency, right? So how often you want this commercial to be broadcast on the media will also cost you money. The color, right? If you want to advertise it on the newspaper, Right, so if that's a black and white, obviously a lot more cheaper compared to a color pages. Right, positions. Right, if you want to um, have these advertisements on the front pages, obviously costs higher than um, in other pages. Timing is also important. Right, uh, when we watch TV, the prime time TV uh, since have a higher viewerships, so normally uh, the advertising costs will be higher than um, other times. So those are the factors that can impact the advertising rates. So that's the advertising. The second approach that we can use uh, to letting more people to know, increase our, our awareness is the publicity. So publicity is the media exposure that is no pace. Um, uh, compared to advertising, kind of advertising we talk about is you have to pay in order to um, get this message out, right? Public city is we're gonna create some unique activities. Uh, we get some media coverages. Um, this media coverage can help to influence the public's or, or opinions. Um, so, uh, so those uh, 
public cities normally would consider as a non-pay media exposures. So a lot of time we would like to identify some newsworthy stories and also try to share these stories with the reporters and editors, let them know what's going on here, um, right? Try to um, encourage people to come here to cover these events and then we'll be able to get a lot of uh, media exposures, uh, let more people to know what we are doing and how this event is and has been organizing. So I'll give you an example. Uh, Western South and Opens, uh, which is a very important event in the greater Cincinnati area. Every year we have been organizing this event. So this event is basically one of the best tennis events in the world. Um, it's ATP 1000 events. So ATP does have multiple different levels of the competition. 1000 is the highest levels of competition just behind the Grand Slam event. Uh, if you're familiar with the tennis, you know, US Open, Australia Open, One Boat and the French Open are Grand Slam event. Just right below those events are ATP 1000 events. Uh, this also is a prime event for the WTA, which is Women Professional Tennis Association. Uh, it's one of very important events for them as well. So very important event, but last year during the pandemics, so this event has been relocated in New York. So the player play in New York. So this year, um, they're going to be back to Cincinnati again. So how are you going to promote this event? Public cities, right? We can use past champions. See who have won the champions in these events in the past. Roger Federer, Novak Djokovic, Andy Murray, those, you know, top star. They won the Western and Southern Open before. Being able to have them back and compete again this year can really help you to promote these events, right? <clears throat> so these are public cities. We don't pay for media coverage, but media would like to come because this is a news worth stories. They want to cover these high profile athletes. <clears throat> so those are public cities. And the third types of the approach that we be able to get our message out is called direct mails or sometimes um, we send out this information through emails. For the direct marketing, that involves sending highly targeted offer announcements or reminders in the print or electronic format to the specific address. <clears throat> I think we have received this kind of advertising mail all the time, right? So uh, for instance, um, if you're living in Oxford, you find out, you know, a lot of um, like Corker giving you their advertisement all the time, giving to every mailbox. And also, since a lot of, we are living in the big data area, a lot of our information has been shared by this uh, giant organization. So we always receive a lot of the letters ask us to open our, open a new credit card, or maybe using uh, another uh, insurance. So we receive this kind of information a lot. So these are direct mails. So for these direct mails, a lot of time they are highly targeted, right? They send it to you with your address, with your names. So they those message a lot of times are very personalized. So having these personalized mails is really beneficial because you can really build up the connection between you and the potential customers, right? So the advantage for having this kind um, of the direct mails or emails is sometimes highly targeted. They can be personalized. And also, if you send out a mail, the mail is tangible. Where people always look at the mail and say, oh, remind me, uh, just remind them, right? I, I just received a mail for these events, right? They asked me to um, go and watch these competitions, right? So, and also the result can be matched very easily. So for instance, you send out someone a mail, uh, someone used the particular you know, positive barcode or something to sign up um, for your service, you know whether um, the mail you send out is effective or not, right? And also they can support other marketing effort as well, right? So um, when you are sent out advertisement, uh, you can, for instance, uh, when you try to sell ticket to someone, you mail the ticket to your potential customers, you can also send out other information to them and try to attract their attentions, right? So those are the advantage. 
For the disadvantage, sometimes could be poor qualities of the database. When you don't have a very good database, you might not be able to get the outcomes you want. And also, it could be somehow very expensive. Right? Send out so many mails, or uh, maybe you send out thousands of mails. Only maybe five percent of them respond to you. Um, so it could be super expensive. Um, so hard for you to get a very good database sometimes. So this is about direct mail and email. Uh, we are living 21st century, so internet is also part of our lives. Uh, we are so hard to live without having an internet. So um, internet marketing has also become common for event marketing. Um, so you can have your own website. Um, having your own website, uh, the benefits is you can update information, um, you can gather users' information as well. So for instance, um, when we have Kentucky Derbies, so in the, their website, you'll be able to see um, a lot of uh, event-related information. Um, they also try to sell a lot of products on their official websites. So um, always they ask you to set up for, if you want to set up for newsletters, so you have to include your personal information as well. So this gives you the great opportunity for you to gather other users' um, information, including their email, um, their gender, their other, some demographic information. So good for uh, you. And also, if you want to spend a little bit more money, you could have a marketable URL. Um, so they can really help you to develop your own branding. Um, that's very good. And we talk about, we can also set up account how we be able to sell product directly to the customer. We'll be able to generate revenue directly for having a website like this. Having a website, another benefit is we can use the website to promote those partners, promote those sponsors, which will enhance the values of the sponsorships, enhance the values of these media partnerships. Uh, you can ask for higher money when we are negotiating a sponsorship deal with potential uh, sponsors. Social media has also become a very, very popular and now we're living uh, in a world that uh, social media can help us to gather a lot of information, right? So the benefit of having social media, how social media differentiate themselves compared to traditional media like television, like newspaper, is that social media can provide a lot of instant communication before, during, and after the events. We can send out this information very quickly and letting more people to know about this information. And this communication is more user-driven and also community-oriented, right? Um, we have a very different type of social media right now. Uh, the benefit for having social media is, first of all, you target broader audiences, right? Unlike that like you work with local media, you only target local audience. You work with national media, you only work target national audience. Social media, you can target global audiences, right? You can generate revenues, right? You can share the link of the website on your social media. You can promote your tickets, promote your sponsorships, promote your um, merchandise products, right? You can also receive respond kind of easy compared to before. Um, you can send out information. Fans who are interested always like to comment, give you a like, give you a retweet, um, give you some um, direct response, right? And also, you have it's a lot easier for you to promote your event uh, because you can have a lot more interaction with your sponsors, with your um, athletes, and with other fans, right? Um, but the concern is um, social media, unlike traditional media, traditional media, you'll be able to control a lot of information that you can disseminate on social media, uh, on, on that media platform. But social media, you can't really control this information and people's comments. You, you might receive bad review, you might receive bad comments, but you just have to learn how you be able to deal with this. So this is about like the social media. We have a lot of different types of social media we're using for a very different way, right? Very common one is a social network like Facebook. Right? Facebook was founded in 2004. So what makes Facebook kind of different is they build up a network. They build up a network, help you get connect with other people, right? So Facebook is very good for building up a brands, engage with fans, deliver media rich contents, and also can be shared, letting more people to know about it. You can create a Facebook account uh, or Facebook groups. You can 
getting those people together and send them very specific messages, help you really target those group of people. And now that we also have an image and video sharing sites like Instagram, YouTube, or short videos like Snapchat and TikToks. Right, so for those platforms, they also give you the opportunity to promote your events, um, sell your products, right? Instagram, you can have a lot of very beautiful pictures of these events, letting more people to know. Instagram also introduced Instagram story, now super popular. A lot of people like to have uh, like a few of short stories. You can not just sharing a pictures or short videos, you can also um, share more like behind the scenes stories, have a lot more interactions. Right, YouTube um, is you'll be able to send out slightly longer videos and kind of like formal videos. Like Snapchat is, you know, very quick short videos. TikTok, they can give you a platform where you'll be able to create a lot of creative contents there, right? So they made the information become very interesting, which will also help you to communicate with your customer better, right? And also Twitter, um, which is the micro blocking service. And so you can use Twitter to provide up-to-date information, share a lot of content and links. A lot of time they also help you to um, sell some tickets um, or other things directly. Right, so those are how you'll be able to use different types of social media platforms. So in the second half of this lecture, we talk about how we're able to uh, promote our events, how we're able to drive sales, how we're able to letting more customers know about it, like build awareness. So let's look at a quick discussion here. I want to go and think about it after learning what we just talked about previously. Right, so think about if we are going to host a Cincinnati Marathon events. Um, I want you to go and think about to create an advertising campaign for this event. So you could introduce, uh, you could incur uh, introductory advertising for 30 seconds to trigger um, customers' interest and also have another one decided um, just a day before the event to encourage uh, more people to go and watch um, these events, right? So you basically create two commercials, um, one 30 seconds, another 30 seconds. One is possibly a month before this event or two months before the events. Another one is just like the day right before these events. So you can think about what media platform would you like to choose to broadcast these commercials and why and how. And how many times um, would you like to run these commercials? And when would you like to run each of the commercial ads? And how could you use social media like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, um, TikToks, and YouTube to uh, promote these events? What information, like what message, what picture, what video, what news would you like to share on those platforms? And how often are you going to share them? And how often would you update this social media before, during, and after competition? Right? Um, so, and why? So, this gives you an um, idea how you'll be able to work with traditional media and also the new media we call social media and being able to disseminate information to the broad audiences that can help us achieve our promotional goal. Right? Okay, that's it for today's class. Um, I hope you enjoy the contents. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to send me emails. All right, have a wonderful day. I will see you guys next time.